everybody, this is Meredith from the Witty Gritty Paper Co. And today we're going to do something a little different. Um, I recently procured quite a few new art supplies. I was traveling um, quite a bit and went to lots of cool stores. And I thought, why not do a haul video? I've never done one on the channel before. And I know some people um, feel differently about haul videos. Some people like them, some people don't. So make sure to let me know your feelings about them in the comment section. We don't have to do another one, but I just thought since I had so much stuff, this would be um, a great opportunity to show it to you guys since a lot of it will probably be featured in upcoming videos. So first of all, I went to Florida and I go there most summers and there's an awesome art store down there called Sam Flax. It's in Orlando. I think they also have a location in Georgia. And let me just grab what I got from there. First of all, I found some new paper that one of them I'd heard of and one of them I hadn't. The first one is this Canson Montville, and I've actually never used it. Uh, the Canson watercolor paper that I usually use is just their one with a blue cover. I think it's just Canson XL watercolor paper. It's um, really cheap student grade. So I've heard of other people using the Montville, but I've never tried it, so I grabbed it. And um, I've used it a little bit. You know, it's like a it's a pretty decent student grade paper, so I grabbed that. And then I also grabbed this other uh, Canson paper, Moulin de Roy, I guess I'm sure I'm botching the pronunciation, but um, it's 100% cotton and I've never seen, I've never seen it before. It's kind of a weird size. It's 9.4 inches by 12.6 inches. So it's a little odd. Usually they're nine by 12, like this one here. And um, I have used it a little bit for some portrait painting and it's lovely. It's got a great um, smooth texture. It's smoother than I would normally expect for cold press, but it's really nice. So, and I, it was a good deal. It, um, it worked out to being about a dollar a sheet. You get 12 sheets. So maybe a little more, maybe like, um, a dollar 10 a sheet, but I thought it was a really good deal for hundred percent cotton paper. So if you see it, I would grab it. I think it's really good. And I also, while I was at the Florida art store, I picked up um, this palette and I've already used it as you can see uh, a little bit. And I just love the shape. It's made of plastic, which I don't really like to mix on customarily because it stains so much, but I just loved the shape. I decided to go for it. It was only like, it was less than $5. And I haven't put any paint in the palettes over here in the wells. I probably won't. Um, I really just got it for the mixing areas and I love it. I love having the three separate wells. So I've loved having that. It's my favorite plastic palette I've ever tried. And I also found this little set of watercolors there. And they're the Yarka brand. They're made in Russia. And I had heard of some other people using them and liking them. I think they're meant to be more of either a student grade paint or like a, a crafter's stampers watercolor because they were really inexpensive. I think they were like, seven dollars for this set of 12 and it came with a little brush too but the brush wasn't very good so i tossed it um but they're very transparent so and they say that too rich transparent colors full pans so um i just grabbed them because i thought they were really cool and i like them the colors uh, there's a white and a black in the set which i don't really care for if you're only going to get 12 but um they're kind of surprisingly good and uh, some of the stuff that i'm showing you here <laughs> i have tried out so it's not all a brand new haul video but um, but I haven't gone in anything too extensively. So these are really cool. And I've never seen them at any other art store. And, and trust me, I get around the art store circuit. Um, another thing I grabbed at the Florida art store was a new number eight round brush. And this is my most used size and shape. And um, it's by Silver, the Silver Brush Company. And the line is Black Velvet. And actually, it is half real hair, real squirrel hair, and half synthetic squirrel hair. And I've actually never owned a real hair brush before. So I really only got it out of curiosity to see if they were any better. I don't really like to support the fur trade. So I, I was a little conflicted, but I just thought I'd try it to see if it was better. And um, I think it's a really, really good brush, but I wouldn't buy any more real hair brushes over synthetic brushes because I like the synthetics. I think they perform just as well as this real hair one. But this is, that being said, this is a really good brush. It is quite expensive. I think it was, oh gosh, I think it was like $30 or $40. So it was pretty expensive. So real hair brushes have that disadvantage as well. 
So, but I wanted to try it out and um, I can do a video about the difference between real hair and synthetic brushes in the future maybe. Leave me a comment if you want to see a video like that. So there's that brush. It's the only brush I got there. And I also grabbed three tubes of new color and I try to be really picky when I'm buying new tube watercolors since I, I have a lot of colors. So it's like inviting a new member into the family sort of. Um, so I grabbed, let's see, I grabbed a core watercolor and I really like the core watercolors. They're um, a little bit different to work with. I find that they dry really hard and their binder is different from like I guess all other artist watercolors. So I do like them though. So I grabbed a cadmium red deep because believe it or not I'd never had a cadmium before. Um, they are actually cadmium. The substance is toxic. So that's part of the reason I didn't have one before but I just thought I'd try it out and I've really enjoyed it for portrait underpaintings so far. Um, but that's just my first impression here. And then I grabbed um, my first Holbin artist watercolor. Um, I've never had any of the Holbins before and I was really attracted to this sort of pastel pink color. I've never seen that um, and I thought it might be pretty opaque so I wasn't sure but I thought I'd just go for it. I was you know I was getting a lot of things so I, I was in the spirit and I absolutely love the color. However it was a bit more opaque than I was hoping. I, I painted it out on some black paper and it was relatively opaque so that's a little disappointing but it is a beautiful color um, just not 100% transparent. But I like it so far. It's the only Holbin one I've tried. It's hard to find pastel watercolors. And then the last one I grabbed at the Florida Art Store was Naples Yellow by Daniel Smith and I love this color. Oh my gosh I've been using it in combo with this Cadmium Red Deep. I've been using it to mix skin tones and I love it. It's like super, super realistic and dependable. So I'm always happy with Daniel Smith watercolors. So I was not surprised at how much I liked it. So that is everything that I grabbed at the Florida art store. And let's see, I grabbed even more stuff at the um, Seattle art store I went to. So I, I took a trip out to Seattle and I wanted to visit an in-person um, Blick store. Um, most of you probably have heard of Dick Blick online and they have a couple in-person locations uh, mostly in cities but they don't have one near me so I took the um, opportunity when I was in Seattle and I went to their location there and I got a lot of stuff. I got this huge pad of that Canson student grade paper I was talking about earlier. This is the type I usually use um, but I got a huge uh, pad of it. I think it was like $15 so I use this mainly for um, card making and practice and sample sheets. So it's always good to have. I've never seen this size at my local art store. And then the only other paper I grabbed there was um, some arches. And let me get it here. I grabbed two pads of this arches hot press paper because I've never seen the arches hot pressed in pads near me. I've seen it in blocks and in sheets but never in pads. So I grabbed this 100% um, cotton and I usually use the hot press for portrait painting because the less tooth it you know tooth suits itself more to like landscapes and all that jazz. So I grabbed this. Um, it was a really good price too. I forget what it was but it was a good price for arches. And that's all the paper I got there. Um, oh I grabbed this. I'm really excited about this. It's watercolor ground. And basically you take this stuff and you put it on surfaces that it would normally not be paintable. So um, I've heard of people putting it on rocks and then painting watercolor on rocks. It basically creates a paper-like surface um, on top of non-porous surfaces, generally speaking. So I've never used it before. This is the core brand. I believe Daniel Smith also makes it. There might be others but those are the two that I've heard of. And um, I got the cold press. I think they also just have like um like a normal one and a half press but this one looked the most interesting to me. Actually I'll open it up for you. It's very interesting looking stuff. It kind of... I can't think of the right word for it. It kind of looks like whipped cream a little bit but thicker. Maybe toothpaste would be a better comparison. But I haven't tried it yet so I'm thinking of maybe doing a video on that. So let me know if you want to see that sooner rather than later. Um, but it was only, I think it was only $15 and that was actually less than I thought it would be for being a new kind of funky product. So I haven't tried that yet but I'm excited about it. And let's see, 
Ooh, I got some watercolor markers at the Seattle Art Store at Blick. And these are like actual watercolor markers. There are a lot of water soluble, water activated markers on the market, and I have a lot of those. But these are legitimate watercolor markers because they have light fast ratings and they're made of real pigment. I guess that's what makes them different. I, I'm pretty sure Windsor Newton is the only company that claims to make you know real watercolor light fast pigment watercolor markers. So I grabbed a couple of those. I grabbed the primaries and I'm definitely going to have these in an upcoming video. I'm going to do a video all about water media. So watercolor crayons, watercolor markers, watercolor pastels, gelatos, all that fun stuff and sort of their advantages, disadvantages, price, that sort of thing. So I grabbed these. They've got two tips. They've got a brush tip, which is actually pretty firm. It's not very flexible. And then they've got a bullet tip. So, and they were, I think, six or seven dollars a piece. They're, so they're not cheap. So I only grabbed three. I'm not sure if I'll like them or not, but, um, but there are those. This is, uh, Blick was the first place I had seen them open stock. And I really didn't want to get a set. I kind of just wanted to get the primaries. So that worked out well. And then I also, along those same lines, I grabbed some of the Caran d'Ache uh, Neo Color watercolor crayons. And um, I haven't had the chance to try them yet, but I tried to pick ones that I thought would be really interesting to see how they activate. Like I took some that were really pale, got the primaries, of course, and then just some greens that I liked. So um, these actually weren't as expensive as I thought. I think they were like two or three dollars a piece, which isn't cheap, but it was less than the watercolor markers. In comparison to the watercolor markers, it looked cheap. So I haven't tried these yet, but these will also be in that water media video, I'm sure. And I grabbed at Blick um, a new brush. So this is my favorite brush line, beginners, artists alike, um, the Princeton Neptune series. I just love them. They are my absolute favorite brushes. They hold so much water, and some beginners don't like when watercolor brushes hold too much water, but I always liked it. Um, and I just didn't have the shape yet, so I grabbed a quill there. And I got a, I went kind of paint crazy, you guys. <laughs> um, I actually store all my paints in little short Starbucks cups because they're just like the perfect size. And these are all the paints I got <laughs> at Blick. So let's see, two of them are core. I think three of them are Daniel Smith, two are M, no, three are M. Graham. And one is this Schminky, I think, um, either Schminka or Schminky, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I've never tried them either. So I grabbed that, this is the first, uh, first place I had seen them open stock. So I grabbed an Ultramarine Violet, which I'm super excited about because I love the Ultramarines and I was just <laughs> really excited to see it. Um, so I haven't tried that yet. I haven't, I haven't really played with any of these too much yet. Um, but I grabbed some M. Grams. Let's see, I've got this Muth Yellow, which I believe is a single pigment. I try to look for single pigment colors when I can. Yeah, it's single pigment. Cool yellow. Quinacridone Rust, which I love all the quinacridone range of colors. Very pretty. Um, and Ultramarine Pink, which I, I went kind of ultramarine crazy. I have the Ultramarine Violet. And then I also got this Ultramarine Rose of Ultramarine over here in Daniel Smith. Phthalo yellow blue, verditer blue. This is a beautiful sort of periwinkle blue. Very nice. And then I grabbed two core colors. This is manganese blue, which is like a very electric blue. You probably can't see that too well, but it's very pretty. And then I grabbed indigo, which kind of amazes me that I've been painting for a while and I never had an indigo. So now I have an indigo. I remedied that. So those are the paints I grabbed there. And I, as you can see, I mostly grabbed brands that I had, I've heard of and I like and I've used. Um, the Schminky is really the only one that I don't have experience with. So I could do a review maybe in the future of those paints. I haven't tried too many of the more international artist grade paints like um, Schminke and um, Holbin and there's, I think there's a French one called Sennelier and there's a, um, there's an old Holland from Holland. <laughs> and I think there's an Italian one too, but the name doesn't come to mind. So maybe I'll do some big comparison someday of all of them. Um, let's see, I already showed you that. Uh, oh, okay. So I went to the Chihuly Garden and Glass exhibit, as you can see, um, in Seattle, which is, of course, beautiful. I highly recommend it if you're ever in the area. And they had this in the gift shop, and I just thought it was really cool. It's a pencil on one end and a brush on the other, and I have no idea if it's going to be any good. Um, it does feel 
pretty soft, which I think is a good sign. For, it's not stiff, so I think it will probably work better with watercolors than, say, acrylics. So I have no idea how good it is, but if it is decent, then it'll be a great travel tool because I can sketch and I can paint and I don't need to have two utensils. So that's very cool. And then also while I was in Seattle, I was riding the monorail and we stopped at one of the, um, one of the stops it stops at. <laughs> and there happened to be a Daiso there. And if you don't know what Daiso is, it's this sort of Japanese dollar store. I think everything's $1.50. And um, they only have locations, I believe, in the U.S., in Washington um, and California. And there's one more, maybe Texas. I'm not sure. Three states. And, of course, that's not near me. And um, I had seen other artists use Daiso brushes. And, um, you know, I saw this Daiso and I was so excited. And so I, like, ran in and I found the set of brushes that I've seen other people using. So you get five of these nylon brushes. Now they don't say that they're for watercolor, but they are soft. So that's always a good sign. Like if the brush is too snappy, then it's probably better for acrylics. That's a good way for you to know um, if your brush really is going to be compatible with watercolor, even if it has, you know, no markings to suggest that. Um, but I was so excited. I guess it's like a, let's see, a 12 round, a 10 round, probably eight, six, and four, eight, six, eight, six, and zero. Okay. So I haven't tried them yet. Otherwise, you'd be able to tell if I'd try them because they're white. They're going to they're gonna stain instantly. But if they're good, I would be so excited to be able to recommend such a cheap um, product for beginners that still worked well. So we'll see about these. I'm really excited. Maybe I'll do a um, cheap art supply challenge or something. Once again, let me know if there's anything you want to see before anything else here um, on the channel any of these products you want to see first. Oh, and um, so that's everything I got in Seattle. And <laughs> um, I found an amazing deal on the Mission Gold watercolors, and you've probably heard of them. They've been making quite the splash in the watercolor scene, and um, particularly their pan set. Um, however, I didn't really want another pan set. I've got a couple, and I, and I like them, but I don't really need another one. Um, but I found a great deal for them on Amazon. So I, I took the plunge and I bought them, and they were here when I came home from vacation. So first of all, what's important to understand is that the Mission Gold watercolor set that I got, it's a set of 34 colors, 15 milliliters each. Um, I have the Korean set. So it says on the top of the box here, there's the, or Asian, there's the Asian set, the US set, and the EU set. And um, you get the same number of colors and amount of paint. They're just different colors in each set. So um, I believe the US version has a white and a black. So, um, and the Asian version, which is the one I have, doesn't have a white and a black. So I really liked that about it. Um, and I believe when I checked the price on Dick Blick, the US version was somewhere around $250. So I wasn't going to buy them. But then I saw the Asian set on Amazon for $80. So I jumped on it. I thought that was a really good deal for artist grade watercolors. And it's a really nice packaging. I can do um, a whole review on these. Make sure to let me know if you want to see that. I, I think I might just do one anyway, even if nobody wants to see it, um, because they're they're really nice. Um, and so I grabbed those off of Amazon. And then at the same time, I have been wanting a ceramic palette for the longest time. And as I mentioned earlier, I really prefer to not mix on plastic because it stains and it yellows, and I just don't like that. Um, I like to mix on ceramic. So I've always wanted a big ceramic studio palette. And I found one also on Amazon at the same time. And I love it. It's like the best thing I've ever purchased. It's huge. It's like 13 pounds, but I love it. And I filled it with um, the Mission Gold watercolors that I got. It has, I think, let's see, 28 wells plus eight around the edges, or maybe 24 wells and eight around the edges. I forget. Um, but... And I put, it, I put it in the color wheel formation. The only downside to this is that um, I don't really have any room to mark the colors. But, you know, I'll get used to it. And really, it's such a good palette. It's got these little indents where the different colors are supposed to go. So the primaries have this sort of triangular indent and the three primaries. And then the secondaries have this steep triangle. And then the tertiary colors have this little... Um, this little nub to signify where they are. So it's it's a really nice palette. 
Um, it was also $80 though. So this is not exactly a casual investment. Like you should definitely mix on plastic first before you invest in something like this. It's just my personal pet peeve to mix on plastic. I just do not like doing it. Um, I can't say why, but it's, it's just, I just don't like that it stains. I like to come back to a pure white. I think that's what it is. Um, and this just, it wipes away and this is beautiful, pretty, you know, smooth, pure white. And I, I really like that. So I have tried out the colors a little bit. I swatched them out and I did a painting with them. So I, I'm not hundred percent sure, um, how I feel about them yet. I really think I need to use them more, but I think so far so good. They're, they're certainly very vibrant. I, I think that the mission gold has been accused of, um, not being very light fast. I believe that's people's main complaint with them, or maybe that some of them are, um, combinations of pigments. They're not single pigment. They're, um, their combos. So we'll see. I might do a full blown review on them because there seems to be a lot of buzz about them. And um, there aren't too many reviews about their tube colors, which is what these are. They aren't the pan set. I've seen a lot of reviews about the pan set, but so there's that. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to use it in too many videos since it kind of barely fits on my table. <laughs> um, but if I can, I will, cause I, I love it. I'm so happy to have it. And even if the mission gold watercolors don't end up being my favorite things in the world, um, I can still just clean them out and put my, um, my other colors in them, like my Daniel Smiths or Core or Windsor Newton or whatever. So the palette will always, um, be a good investment for me. Okay. So I think that's everything. Oh wait, there's one more thing. There's one more thing. Um, I grabbed a Uniball Signo white pen and I've been wanting a really good white pen for a long time because all I've, all I've had are the jelly roll white pens and they're okay, but I feel like they run out or dry up or whatever, go bad relatively quickly. Um, at least for me, I don't use it all the time. So maybe that's just user error. Um, but they also like when I use them on a watercolor, what happens is they'll reactivate. A lot of times they'll reactivate the color underneath that I'm trying to go over. And then I get sort of this cloudy colored, you know, white, it's not pure white and it clogs my tip. So I wanted to get one of these Uniball Signo white pens cause I had heard good things about them. And I actually didn't find this at Blick. I found this at a little paper store. Um, Blick did not have it, but the paper store had it. So, so there's that, there's um, fate for you. And I really like it so far. I, I haven't used it too much, but I did a side-by-side -side comparison of it and the Jelly Roll white pen. It was like night and day. It was so good. So very happy to have found this. Definitely get one if you see one. They are worth it. I think they also make gold and silver. I, I can't speak to how good those are, but I assume they're probably good since the white one is so good. All right, everybody. So that's everything I got. Um, like I said, make sure to leave me a comment and tell me if you like haul videos, if you don't so much, um, or what product you want me to see or review or demo first. And um, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye. Mm -hmm.